Good morning and welcome to prayer and devotion on this Saturday, um, May 22nd. It is good to be with all of you today to start off our day together. Uh, let me take a minute to say good morning to Barbara and Donna. Um, thank you for holding us in prayer, Barbara. I'm praying that this is a, a, uh, a wonderful time set apart for you in prayer as well. I'm glad you're here today. Um, good morning, Daniel and Rosetta, holding you in prayer today. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. Good morning, Susan and Esther. It was so good to see you yesterday, Susan, holding you both in prayer today. Good morning, Michelle and Augusta. I'm glad you're here, holding you both in prayer. Good morning, Karen. You made it. Yay. And good morning, Minda, holding you both in prayer today. Good morning, Renata and Yolette. I'm glad you're here holding you both in prayer today. And um, good morning, Myrna and Augusta. I'm glad you're here as well. Holding all of you in prayer as we begin this day. Um, I'm glad you've chosen to get up on this Saturday morning and be with us in this time. So today we're looking at Matthew 4. Um, and speaking specifically we're looking at Matthew 4 18 through 22 uh, this is the call of Jesus um, to follow it's very the very beginning when Jesus calls his first disciples um, so if you want to open up your Bibles and turn to Matthew 4 verse 18 uh, my name is Cindy Stauffer. I am blessed to serve as a pastor at the United Methodist Church at New Brunswick. Uh, and we gather every morning at 6.30 for this time together. And it is good to be with all of you today. So let's jump in. Our devotion today is entitled, Jesus Always Pointed People Toward a Better Version of Themselves, Particularly, particularly When They'd Failed. 
when they'd failed. Jesus always pointed people to a better version of themselves, particularly when they failed. So Matthew 4, 18 starts off this way. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people and immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in the boat with their father, mending their nets, and he called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. This comes Today's devotion comes from uh, Bob Goff's book, live in grace, walk in love. And this is what he says about today's uh, scripture. He says, it's hard enough to have, it's hard enough having to endure our failures, but the failure itself isn't as bad as the story we tell ourselves about it. We tell ourselves our worth took a hit because we've tied it to our performance. Our darker angels say we should have known we wouldn't amount to much because we let someone we love down. We say we'll never risk giving our heart away again because it just never works out. The failure isn't where we get roadblocked. Failure's just a part of being human. The problem is usually the story we tell ourselves that keep us from moving past it. Jesus saw people's failures as an opportunity to tell them the truth about themselves. After Peter denied him on the loneliest night of his life, Jesus told him he would become the rock the church would be built upon. After the woman was caught in adultery and thrown at his feet, Jesus told her she wasn't condemned. He said there was hope for a beautiful future if she wanted it. As he forgave people who brought shame upon themselves, he always took the opportunity to say they were more than their mistakes and his grace was bigger than their lives. Jesus pointed people toward a better version of themselves. He saw their shame and knew the story they told themselves could have a greater paralyzing effect on their lives than the failure itself. He wanted them to know their value wasn't based on their ability to get it right. He wanted them to understand who they were was more than what they'd done. He wanted them to know he saw them at their worst and had never loved them more. Next time you mess up, don't invent a new plot. Don't tell yourself a story different from the story that Jesus has been telling about you. Listen to Jesus instead. What would Jesus say he really thinks about you? That's the question for today. What would Jesus say he really thinks about you? Um, this is uh, such an interesting, I, I, you know, I didn't take that much psychology when I was in college or in seminary. We talk about pastoral care, but um, I do know, I am human, so I do know what happens when we make mistakes and the stories that we tell ourselves. And those are always worse than what actually happened. First of all, they're worse because we make them worse. We make them bigger. But the but what may, really makes it worse is it tells, we tell a story about who we think we are. 
And usually that word, the word that comes to mind is shame. And so usually the story will often sound like this. I am no good. I have failed over and over again. And I keep hurting the people I love. So therefore, I'm not good for them. And I'm not worthy. Or I've failed at this job. I, I can't seem to get the promotion. It must be that I am not worth it. And I will always be stuck in this dead end job. Or, and we can tell, I mean, there's stories. Everyone knows the stories <clears throat> that we tell ourselves. This relationship isn't going anywhere. We just keep spinning around and around and there's never anything moving forward. And so it's not worth my time or my energy. Um, there's all kinds of stories that we tell ourselves. And the, the interesting thing is that after something has happened, I mean, I will meet with people and they'll say, you know, this has happened, Pastor. And then I'll, and then I'll say, well, what is, the, what is it that you've been focusing on? What is the story? It, what's the truth of the story? And then what is the story that you've been telling yourself? Because when we do this, we just get stuck. It is, it's just to be, to live in shame is just to be stuck. And honestly, friends, who of us wants to be stuck? Because if shame is the only story that we can tell about ourselves or our experiences, there's nothing worth moving forward. Shame says, this is who you are. You are a failure. You are the person that never will get the promotion. You are the person not worthy of love. That's what shame tells us. And none of us wants to live in that place. And it isn't what God wants for us either. And so we see today Jesus calling his disciples. And there were times that they fished and they caught nothing. And Jesus said, <clears throat> come and follow me. And I'm going to show you how to catch people. And did they do it right all the time? No, they failed again and again and again. And Jesus still kept calling them. You know, even after Peter denied him three times, Jesus kept calling him, love, take care, take care of my sheep. And he did. I mean, like, we are here because, because the disciples were finally able to do the work that Jesus saw was possible in them all along. And the same is for you and me. When we get stuck in the stories that tell us we are not worthy, we are not lovable, we are not capable, those stories keep us from the real truth, from living the real story that Jesus has for our lives. And so this morning, I pray that um, whatever the shame voices that you allow to fill your head, today will be replaced with the voices of Jesus calling you, calling you with all of your ability, with all of your gifts, but with all of your worthy and belovedness. You are beloved children of God. And Jesus is calling you for such a time as this, for such a reason as right now. And trust, trust that it is such a greater story than the one that you're allowing to tell yourself. So let us pray. Good and gracious God, we come before you today acknowledging that too often we have filled our head with negative stories about who we are, about our unworthiness, about the times that we have failed. And yet you look at us 
and see potential. You see our belovedness and you call us to follow and show up. And so Lord, show us how to follow you this day, to listen for your voice, to drown out the voices of shame and to trust that you have placed in us a greater story. Lead us this day into this story of hope and possibility of resurrection and redemption. Lead us this day, Lord, that we might follow you more fully and trust, trust in the story, the story that you have planned out for our lives. We lift all of this up to you, Lord Jesus, as together we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So what is the greater story that God has planned for your life? Ask you to hold in prayer uh, the Faconda family today as they lay to rest Victor's wife, Audrey. I know that there are many in our community that are uh, mourning uh, her loss, but pray for her going home today. Uh, and um, looking forward to being with you tomorrow. Tomorrow's Pentecost, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So excited. We have dance. We have a a, a drama um, that's going to be a part of our worship as well. Uh, it's going to be a, a great worship. If you are able to come in person, I encourage you. Uh, there's still plenty of room. Uh, so we'd love to have you in worship tomorrow. Um, but if you can't come in person, virtual works as well. So uh, I hope you have a blessed day. God loves you, my friends. Um, and so do I. I will see you in church tomorrow. Bye, friends.